I'm live. Okay, so let's begin with. Oh, I forgot the package I was going to open. Oh well. Uh, begin with get that out of the way with the Chinatown knives. So this was a Chinatown knife that didn't even barely open. I literally just threw some. Uh, you can look back on an old. It's a little mini switchblade, and I don't think there's any heat treat whatsoever to this knife. I think I can, can just break it. Although it does have an edge. It feels like a razor blade. So I kind of feel like they put a razor blade in there. I mean, it's thin. And as you can see, it's pretty bad. But it's snappy. And that's a comparison to the other Chinatown knife that I got, which is now buried. So I don't think I'm going to be able to find it. it should be here somewhere. Oh, yeah, here. Here's one of them. Look. It's a double. Watch this. See that? <laughs> Watch. And then the other side. Uh, before it was only opening to there. Now it's opening a little further. But I'm just going to shoot some. Uh, I'm not going to put any expensive lube oil in there. That side serrated. Look at it. See, it doesn't open all the way. But anyway, I'll clean the gunk out. And it'll probably work just like the last one did. So this thing's kind of hilarious. It's like this side. And then this side. Well, once again, you know, I bought this on purpose, believe it or not. So there's those Chinatown knives. I don't know, is it too dark? It's too Okay. Sorry to Sue Chicken and Goondocks. I know you guys were in here earlier. I don't know if it said premiere, if I'm going live, if I am Sorry live. I don't know if it said premiere, if I'm going live, if I am live. I don't know if it said premiere. Okay. Well. Um, anyway, so I'm going to show a bunch of green knives now. And... Uh, Hey, hey, Goondocks, you came back. Thanks. So now I'm going to show... Wait, no, no. I need to show the other... So that was the one Chinatown knife. And there's another Chinatown knife. Let's see. What was the other Chinatown knife? I don't remember anymore. What else did I get there? I thought there was another one. There was the silly double switchblade. What was the other one I got? Oh, I know, of course. <laughs> it's a little mini gold OTF, which is probably Cali legal. Let's see. It is, yeah, pretty much two inches. So. I had one of these before, a silver one, and the spring and it broke. So this thing was eight bucks. You can hear that. So I just got it for the pure fidget factor. And unlike Birdshot, mine is not actual gold. Sassafras, hey, would love to uh, sit around and chat, but I have to go to bed working early in the morning. Okay, thanks for joining me for a little bit. Um, I'm just going to go through a bunch of St. Patty's Day's knives and I'm check it out. So, St. Patty's Day, green, Gerber Axe. This is the 17 and a half inch uh, hatchet. What else is green? See, look, this, is that green? I don't think the lighting is good enough in here. Can you? That's more of a brown, but sort of greenish. Let me see if I can turn it on. Oh, this is all going to come crashing down. As you can see, I don't have the actual setup yet. I'm going to actually set this up. So let's try this. Medio? I don't know if that's any better. Whoa! <laughs> okay, you yeah, got $8 worth of fidget, definitely. I agree. Don't take an axe to the back, bro. 
Okay, so there's that. I'm gonna hang this up on the wall. Okay, and then what else have we got green? So I don't think that's so this is I just wanted to show this. This is called the some the tiger, but it's like it's like a, a self-defense knife purely. And uh, you know, you, you you wear it like this underneath, like that. And you know, it's purely meant to be tactical, like this. And, and it's like a, you know, you put your other arm in there. So it's it's pretty cool actually. And uh, on the side on the SMKW site, they're like, oh, the sheath is there's some guy review. It's like, oh, the sheath is terrible. It's actually very versatile. It it, it does what it's meant to. I think it's a 440A or a 440C. It's kind of a kooky looking blade, but the guy the guy's a knife expert, so um, he's got all these hooks in it and stuff. So those are obviously meant for specific kind of hooking actions, you know? So, you know, various grips, uh, you know, jimping, it's jimtastic. Yeah, the Kensei knife, that's what it's called. Uh, it's... Yeah, it's the knife, right? I mean, I guess this is a tan, but it's sort of a greenish tan. So I'm looking for green. No? Okay. There we go. All right. This I haven't opened just yet. Cash card, these SOGs. Let's see. Green. So I'm showing all the green knives. Um, this is the glow in the dark mallet for tent stakes. It's glow in the dark, so it's kind of green. I've got all my Rough Riders, the moon glow, so these are all green. Oh, you know what? I forgot my zombie Nick. Oh, it's in my it's in my case with all my traditionals. So this is the trapper. This is the lock, the double lock back, and it's got a clip too. And these scales, they do glow. The lady leg, and oh, this is the trapper. I guess this must be the stockman. Yeah, this is the stockman. This is the stockman. Looks like it's almost a sow belly. Okay, so those are my glow in the dark and I, the green ones. Here's our favorite CRKT, the gears. Lambda. Si, Lambro. Minha faca. So this is hers. I had to get a second one because I like this too. It's glow in the dark. Uh, what's your opinion on SOG? Well, um, I think they're overpriced, but they're creative. Um, I think CRKT is even more creative than SOG. Uh, SOG fell off for a while, but then, you know, of course, they came back with the Terminus XR. The action on it is great, but I'm going to do a review on it. Um, the pocket clip's a mess. I mean, you cannot pull. You cannot pull the Terminus XR out of your pocket. And there's people, uh, reviewers, that are just going on and on about it. And I bring it up in the comments. They're like, oh, I haven't had any problems. So I'll show you. I'm going to demonstrate to you. I don't see how it could possibly come out of the pocket properly. So uh, so I'll continue with some more green knives. So this is – so she, she loved this. This is her favorite knife. So she said, you've got to bring this to me. So I went and got a second one. So I'll probably hold on to this one and give her the one in the box. Although, okay, this, okay, believe it or not, I got this knife. It's green, sort of a green. I think it's actually FRN. It kind of feels like G10 now. Oh, it is. It's a G10, it looks like. Um, it's just sort of a, it's a frame lock. It, uh, oh, wow, just is stuck. It will not come out. Yeah, the detent on that is pretty stiff. It's a frame lock. Tip down. It's got a pry bar, uh, etc., on it. But the reason why I got this is because it actually came in this. It came in here, and I wanted to have an extra one. I didn't mean to put my glow in the dark ones in there. I was going to make like a little survival kit kit out of it, or like a fire kit. But because it's clear, I can put all of my traditional in there, and sunlight hits it, and at night it glows up. So that's why I kind of keep this one by the bed. So. That's how this came. That's where this knife comes from. But it's green. Uh, this, I guess, is more of a yellow. This is the Rescue. This is the Glow-in-the-Dark um, Swiss Army. 
uh, I think they call it the rescue or something. Um, at any rate, it's actually more yellow, isn't it? Um, what else is green? The Trophy Master. These are Bud K knives. I think this was like a couple of bucks. I mean, these awful wannabe Mora knives, but it's green. And it's got this ridiculous, like, choil up here. Ghost. Ghost. Come on. I like a knife. You like a knife? <laughs> and then, oh, this is more of a trailing point. So these are probably, maybe it's not even 440C, you know? I mean, the grips are okay. You could probably skin something. I mean, you could skin a rabbit. Don't know if you can skin a deer or a, mo a moose. Okay, and then what else? Green. Here's the mother of all green knives. This is the Joker. What do they call these things? The tornado or the cyclone? Um, if you look... Limited edition, one of 1,200. <laughs> At any rate, no, this is number 147. Uh, Cutlery Lover uh, actually does a stab test with this, and he shows the, the wounds that it leaves in some cardboard boxes. And hey. It's pretty funny. Oh, yeah. Why do you have this faca? Hmm? Ah, é. Oh, yeah. Só para matar. So. Oh, yeah. It's like a spiral <laughs> knife. <laughs> she's like, what, she's like, what is the point of that knife? I'm like, it's just for killing somebody. It's like, yeah, pretty much. Yep, Bud K. Uh, let's see. Uh, I have a grip of fixed blades from Bud K. Yeah. So you put it in a drill and make all. That's kind of yeah. It's the cyclone, that's what they call it. But this is the limited edition Joker cyclone. This came out when that movie came out, when the Joker came out. Um, how they got the license for this is or maybe it was not, it was a legal license. And just so you know, look at that. It it doesn't even fit. Look, I've tried a million different ways. It it doesn't actually fit. Like it there's no tight fit in there at all. So I, I don't know what you're supposed to do with this because, as you can see, it just, it's perilous. I like, and this glass breaker, I mean, it has a, it has a point. You could, you could cut with this. It's a pyramid. I don't know if you can see that. It's, it's an actual pyramid and it's sharp as, as all hell. I think that's the name. Yeah, it is. My boy would love that. That, yeah, it, you know. Yeah, I I figured, I don't know. It was a free gift, anyway. Uh, and they call it limited edition. Speaking of limited edition green knives, this is the Lynn Thompson Chris Tylight that came out, I think, last year. Um, this is one of Mariana's favorites. She calls this the snake knife because it looks like a snake. Cobra. <laughs> okay, let's see. <laughs> so, uh, if you look at, um, I think it's OCD for EDC. I think I got this. Yeah, I got this from him. I think his review, he points out if you look at that liner, it's extremely short. And as a result, it's very, very stiff to get that to get that over. So it's sort of, it's got a lot of problems, you know, but it's a fun knife. The other thing too is if they had extended the, the, the scale over, then you could have made it a true Chris, like a sword and done that second edge. But unfortunately it's not. And they also reinforced the tip. I don't know if you can see how robust the tip is. I mean, they do do a good job of making robust tips. Okay, now this is sort of a green knife. This is the Tucson. I don't know what number. Just says D2, but it's a Tonto, a type of Tonto. It's got an odd grind. I don't know if you can see how odd that 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 bevel there at the end is. Um, it's 
looks like it's almost a full flat ground with a micro bevel. Uh, my green micarta, um, liner lock, and very smooth action. But I don't know if you can hear that rattle. Listen, listen, okay. listen. I don't know if you can hear that. It's really annoying. Watch, listen. See? Can you hear that? Something is hitting. I think the liner is hitting the micarta scale. So it kind of drives me crazy. It's got a nice deep pocket. The action is unbelievable. Look at that. I mean, it, talk about drop shetty. It's fantastic. Uh, here's another green. Okay, so I don't. I have the original Kershaw version. Not the original. I mean, Almar made the original, and then Kershaw oh. came out with the Almar series. And um, it these are great neck knives. This is much lighter than the Kershaw one, and it has better steel. It's a D2, but once again, green green knife. I haven't, as you can see, I haven't even opened most of these yet. Now, I brought this out because I thought this is almost a brown green, but looks like it's mostly just brown, so never mind. That's the Hawkbill Honey Badger. Fantastic action on these. Look at that. Honey Badgers. Listen to that detent. I mean, the action on these is on. Look at that. Just drop shut. Look at that. You know, and... I figured as long as I'm going to get a honey badger, I'm going to get a. I'm going to get one that's three inches. And yes, this is the HCR version, not the not the D2. Um, and I thought I'd get a hawkbill. You know, these are hawkbills were originally for um, gardening, so you put it in the pole grip. This was this was this kind of knife. It's a very it's a gardening kind of knife. It's like a peasant knife, but these days it's kind of used as a you know as as a self defense knife as well. It's become popular. Because if you look at the blade geometry, worn cliffs and hawkbills are favored because for the reach. So if you're slashing, if you've got, for example, a trailing point, I want you to look at the geometry. The every arrow, a hawkbill, every inch of that blade, you get full extension, if you will. So as I'm slashing down, I'll catch everything. If that makes sense. That's why they became popular as self-defense knives when in the I think in the 70s. Here's the cold steel uh gun. What's it called? The gun sight there. The gun sight. Once again, green. I think this is their Grivex. So there's another green knife. Like those claws from Badger. I like the way Tucson lists on ebay and all knives start at a buck yeah it's more stabby looking than a regular tonto yeah it is chris looks hard to sharpen uh you know um if you have one of those cami you know those 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 rigs It's and you've got it clipped in. Theoretically, you should be able to use the same angle because it's the same thing as having a curved blade, right? If you've got a curved blade, it's as you as you bring it along, it's going to keep that same angle. Now, maybe that doesn't happen for the recurve part of the blade. I'm not sure. That's a good question, but yeah, it, no, I, I think that's why people don't really want Chris's because I think they don't want to deal with uh, having to deal with the uh, with the recurves in it. Now here is the CRKT windage. This is sort of a gray green. I mean, it's really kind of more gray or silver, but it's kind of got a green tint to it. I got that one because it's the this used to be the cheapest way to get vesserations. So this was the first time I got a Vesseration blade. Um, some people have said it's a little overrated. I think it looks aggressive and vicious. Um, I cut some cord with it and it just went right through it. So, um, And I've still got some tape on it. Um, the windage, the problem with the CRKT, this is the CRKT uh, Ruger collaboration. I think Ruger has, they have great guns, but they also have, great knives because they did it through CRKT. And I think out of all the knife companies, CRKT is the uh, Rugers are the best. I have the Heavy and Go. I have this. I have the Cordite. 
they had the LCK one and two. So here's another, this isn't a green knife, but it's got the green, you know, the camo lanyard. And what I love about this is look at the bead. It's a revolver. That is so clever and cute. I don't know if you guys can see that. So I can't get on board with serrations. Um, yeah, what do you not like about serrations? Um, they're great for cutting cord. If you're doing work with serrations, let me show you. So I had yet... I had yet to get a, a micarta knife. This is the cheapest micarta knife you can buy. It's 18 bucks. Unfortunately, it's tip, tip down only, which I can't stand. Um, and it only comes in partially serrated. I don't know if you can see those serrations. This has very toothy serrations, extremely toothy. And Amy Carta. Amy Carta. Amy Carta. E isso é é é é padrão de de indígena de Nova Nova Zealand. Ah, é. So this is designed by a New Zealand uh, Wihongi. Uh, Sue, you've mentioned this, the Wihongi, and you can see that's the Maori. It's like a Maori Maori like tattoo pattern or whatever, and um, it's this micarta. It's a nice micarta, a uh, liner lock. But it, it's very thin blades. I don't know if you can see how slicey that is. I used, I happened to be EDCing this one day. And I was at my friend's place and there was, the, one of their palm trees was brushing their, their rooftop. And it was the, the noise was driving me crazy. So I kind of jumped up and I grabbed it. And I used those serrations to cut, to saw right through uh the palm trees the goondocks i think you're in florida you know what palm trees are like they are extremely fibrous if i didn't have those serrations i don't think i'd have been at it for a while i carried the accurate for long oh yeah i think you mentioned that um yeah i got i did an unboxing on that. i think you mentioned that uh so more chinatown knives here is the other version believe it or not i've gotten like every color they have in Chinatown, which is like a, a, a couple bucks. See, this one didn't open all the way either, but see, I got it to be really snappy. Although these things are dangerous because these buttons get deployed all the time. And and look, these scales, they just completely come apart. I mean, the 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 the, the crappy workmanship on this is astounding. I mean, you have never seen a worse knife. I mean as you can see, there's tremendous wall play. The, the the blade itself, like, I don't know if you can see that flexing. I could literally just, I don't think there's any heat treat. However, there must be some because it's about as sharp as a razor blade because it's as thin as one. So this will definitely cut. I know it's, I've sliced open many, uh, I used to carry this in my uh, in my day bag and it would just cost me. And, um, Okay, let's see. Oh, you're in Oregon. Oh my god, you're close. Oh shoot. You should make a road trip down here. I guess I just don't want to deal with sharpening. Yeah. Yeah, they are. They're ugly and they're a pain to sharpen. Um, what got me, I was originally prejudiced against um serrations until I heard Lynn Thompson talk about it. And he was basically saying the reason why serrations are there is because it re it uh, it gives your blade a lot longer life, like in the field. It basically allows you to have many many bevels, so to speak, and they stay sharper longer. In other words, they have more cutting power for longer. The same, even though they're the same dullness. And um, what uh, what Neves knives was saying is that that serrations are not hard to sharpen because they're chisel ground. If you take a look at serrations, they're chisel ground. Look, see, there's no bevel whatsoever on the other side. So he's saying that it's not that hard that you just sharpen the one side because there's no either easier sharpening than a chisel ground. That is the easiest sharpening there is to do. Eastern Washington here, so we're all West Coast. Oh, I didn't know that. We're all West Coasters. 
Uh, the blade centering on this is awful. If you can see that the blade play, that it is awful. Um, but anyway, here we go. Another green knife. Here's uh, the Boker Kalishnikov XL. <laughs> ridiculously huge knife so all the depth that was dangerous all the <laughs> all the desert warrior uh desert warrior knives are always going to be this copper or you know rose gold blade and it's going to have these green scales so once again that's always going to be an option a saint patrick's day option for a green knife uh here's the rest of the part of the Moon Glow series. This is the Rough Rider Moon Glow series that I showed you earlier in the, in the traditionals. This is um, the Small Hunter. And if you look at the picture, you can't tell. But I mean, this thing is tiny. I don't know if you can tell. Look at how small that Hunter is, which is a sweet little EDC size, I think. Um, that's interesting. It's a clip blade, but it's almost a trailing point clip blade. Clip blade, and I can't stand oh, no their 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 sheaths. As you can see, they're completely loose in there. They, they sort of made a one size fits all. Um, the nylon itself is fairly thick and robust, and and it does hold. But you know, without without that button, I mean, it just comes right out. So I'm not too care, and and it doesn't give you carry options like this is you know belt loop only you can't you can't scout carry this which is how i like to carry my fixed blades um so what else have we got here uh some more just random edc gear green these are those um those capsules those aluminum capsules with the o-rings so i'm just gonna put like a fire fire kit as you can see i haven't created any of my little kits here yet uh little green this is my uh the micro edc thing that i got last time from knife country uh, here's that waterproof knife or it's a diver's knife or something to that extent it's not waterproof uh, but i actually like it it's kind of cool it's like a little keychain knife and um this counts so jade is a form of green so we've got the cjrb small small feldspar that's in jade g10 and liner lock incredible action and the ria which really reminds me of the crkt uh, ceo action very very similar um before there was the ria there was the ceo so once again, I got them in the great jade green ten. Here's the smaller aluminum one. Oh well, there goes that O-ring. Yeah, we'll have to find the O-ring later. Oops. Oh, there it is. That didn't work out too well. I don't have two hands though either. Oh, I see. You got to really seat it in there, otherwise the O ring gets all kinked up. Oh well. Okay, so there's that. Um, yeah, the Ria. So I get these in the Jade G10 because what I discovered was in my original version of the Ganzo 727S. This is the small. This is the in the Rat 2 size. Um, I took the scales off and I actually painted the underside with glow in the dark paint. And yes, indeed, it really does work well it glows in the dark so th i did that as an experiment to see if it would work and indeed if that works you know for sure it'll make these glow and as you can tell i'm into glow in the dark knives and pink knives that's my thing and then partially green knives here's the harn's beak um oh grom oh hey how's the thumb it it that's me trying to bend it. So it doesn't bend. I can, I went to physical therapy today, as you can see, we're working on getting it to bend. So, and then most of the scab has all come off now. So 
It's getting better. Wrong. Okay, next. Green knives. This is the CRKT CEO bamboo. This kind of looks yellow, but I think it's meant to be a yellowish green because it's bamboo. So it's got to be at least somewhat green. So you can see that it has that famous CEO action, which is really, really nice. I mean, this one, not as much as my other CEO, but the, it flips. It just really snaps out there. Very slicey blade. I find that slice. I find um, there are times where you really need a slicey blade, and this has really come in um, handy uh, when you need something really slicey. The lock up on this is lousy. Okay. I'm so close. Uh, here is the um, QSP. This is a fixed blade deck knife. This is called the. Um, the QSP, the Nekmuk, because it's based on the Nesmuk. I've got the uh, Rev Nesmuk as well. It's kind of a three and a half finger. Five. See how it's got that duck face? Can it get your pinky on there? I have large gloves, size hands. So it's a fantastic Ergos. Um, great little skinning, skinning blade. Um, good piercing, yeah, too. But once again, green, it's a green G10 uh, with this green sort of Kydex. I think it's real Kydex. Um, this is for you, Sue. Check this one out. This is the M-Tech button lock. Check out the action on this. Oh, never mind. Not very good, is it? Okay. You see how it drops shut? This is like $8. Little bit lackluster action, I realize. It'll break in. And I haven't lubed this up at all. This is factory. I'm waiting for it to break in before I lube it right away. Unfortunately, it's a tip down only, which I'm not crazy about. So I didn't realize the action on this was so bad. This is a um, a push button as opposed to a uh, light switch. So if you light switch it, it kind of works, but it kind of really wants a push button. So. There's a green uh, aluminum scales, uh, but you know it's like eight bucks. Uh, you can't go wrong. Uh, and this is the uh, with just the button, so it's got good. I have the al aluminum button lock. Very noisy, really, really. You mean that when it drops shut? Yeah, it does, certainly doesn't make noise. Here's the the recreation of the Bundeswehr. Uh, Williams Knife Life was asking, how do you sp how do you pronounce that? Is it Bundeswehr? Bundeswehr? It's Bundeswehr. Wehr, like weapon. Bundes is like the name of their republic is a Bundes republic. It's like county. They have Bundesstaat. So Bundes is like means kind of like union or like county or something so uh this is their the german army's knife or the west german army's knife well this is this is actual german that's the german eagle post nazi symbol they kind of had to go back in history and say how can we have a symbol a national symbol that isn't associated with nazism you know and it comes with this um crappy vinyl sheath but it does have a wood saw on it here it's got the cover. You have to pluck that cover off, and it's got a nail file there, and then the combo uh, uh, bottle opener. Um, got a nice snap to it. Uh, here's the blade. It's got the the German eagle on there on the on the Ricasso, uh, and an all sharp all. So, in a lanyard tube. So that's another green knife. This is probably one of my favorite green knives, if not one of my favorite knives. It's the Cold Steel 8015 with the Scorpion lock. Um, so you, I don't know if I can show you, lift it up. 
It's a lot like the Gavin Gavin G and G Hawk, uh, the uh, the um, the Buck. What's that? So as you can see, it's fidget friendly. Um, very robust. Prepare, Bernardo vai entrar, viu? Tá. And uh, green, the green micarta, or green. Oh, is it G10? Hold on. Yeah, it looks like it's green G10. But it might be that grivery stuff. It's got a lot of texturing on it. Maybe it's Grivex, which is their version of... Um, GFN. Okay, here is the QSP. This is the penguin, I think. D2 green micarta, beautiful green, OD green micarta. So it's nice and smooth. I usually don't like smooth, but I like this. And the drop shuttiness is ridiculous. I mean, the action on this is yeah. unreal. Oh, hey, Bernardo, did the bait? Capitão. Oi. So, lanyard, you know, putting a lanyard hole up there, if, if the lanyard comes out this way, it kind of gets in your palm. So, you kind of want it off to the back more, but it does have a deep pocket clip. So, let's see. Cold steel, yeah clunks when i close it okay yeah i don't put lube um until it breaks in first and then i lube it and that's something that i mean at first i would just put lube on right away and then i heard birdshot uh iv talking about um that you should let your knife break in first if you lube it right away it'll take a lot longer for it to break in so I'm trying to flip them more before I, I get to that. Here's the shuffle, the Kershaw shuffle, which has the uh, bottle opener, which doesn't work very well, by the way. Um, but um, teal is sort of a blue-green. So I don't know if you'll get away with that being green, but teal is kind of a blue-green. It's not very drop shutty at any, at any rate. Uh, let's see, what else? This is the NLAN. Axis style lock. If you can see, I believe that is a green and black layered G10. It looks beautiful. It looks like that silkworm, like the Harn silkworm, but uh, the action is not too great. As you can see, it's not. It's not phenomenal. Um, I think they have better knives now, though. That does have better action. the The handle is good, though. You know. Um, it's nice and ergonomic, um, and of course, it's got the action, lock, uh, the uh, axis style lock. And you know, I didn't, I didn't pay very much for that. Uh, here, I got this from. This is who did the mod on this? I'm blanking now. Is it one minute? No, not one minute. No, it's, it's a guy right down here in Orange County, actually. I can't believe I'm blanking on the channel, but this is the mini sheepdog, the Kaiser mini sheepdog. He added that hole, so it came out pretty rough. And I don't care about cosmetics, so you know, he it's it's worth it to have. See, as you can see, it always needed it. Look, look at the cutout here. How did it not have that in the first place? It's like perfectly cut out for it. So as you can see, you can spidey flick it. So for me, it was definitely worth it, um, even though it, it was a bit rough. Well, maybe not thumb, but spidey flick certainly. He uh, sort of anodized the clip, but it didn't. It still moves. Again, you know, it's a pretty rough mod job, but I don't mind. It's it's a three and a half finger knife uh, at best, but again, it's three inches. So it's pretty much legal anywhere. He stonewashed it. It's got that great flipping action. Some people don't like it because see how the flipper tab gets in the way as you close it? It is a little bit annoying. So that's one of the faults of this 
knife. I don't know if I'm taking too long. Okay, here's the Ontario Rat number one. It's a huge knife. Fantastic action. And that's that nice looking green. Uh, green. Is it G10? Can't be. It's got to be GFN, right? RF, FRN. Or... It's got to be. This is the OS 8 model. Um, I didn't, I always get, I always try and get, I almost always try and get the cheaper model. So you can see, I still haven't even flipped around the, the clip yet. As you can see, I've never, I've never carried this. I probably won't. I've got it purely as comparison, you know, like to do size comparisons. I mean, look at how big this knife is. That's how big the Ontario Rat 1 is. It's bigger than the friggin' 8015. I mean, if you're bigger than a cold steel knife, you are a big knife. Let's compare it to the, uh, where on earth is the, uh, so that's how big compared to the XL. And, and the XL is literally a, oh no, it's not the XL, it's the double XL. There already is an XL. This is the Blade Blade uh, Blade H2 exclusive Kalishnikov double XL. I mean, this is just ludicrously huge. Um, the action on this is really good. Well, it doesn't drop shut, but anyway. This is an extremely underrated, and it's really surprising. They actually um, discontinued this, I think, this year. This is the Kershaw Fraction. If you can go to Walmart and get this, this is worth the value. It's got fantastic action. Look at that. It just drops shut. It's got it's very snappy. It's got this carbon fiber laminate on top of um, uh, probably it can't be G10. I doubt it's G10, but it's you know it's got the carbon laminate, and I mean it's very snappy. I used to EDC this all the time when I had a lot less knives. This was one of my earliest knives. And I used to EDC this very light. I mean, this is stupid light. Uh, oh, this is what I meant to show in the beginning. I really meant to show this in the beginning because I, 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 I wanted to show this to um, Pete from a New Jersey Knife Guy. He is going to love this. Look at that. See that? Boker Arbolito tree brand. Can you see that? And it's on this chain. I added that carabiner, but you know, it's on this chain, right? And what I carry on this is my Boker Copper Electrician's Knife. And I am telling you, for gentlemen's carry, you can't beat this because it's completely unthreatening. I had to like open all these letters in front of uh, voters and stuff. and. You know, I have this I have this clipped right here. Breast pocket carry is the way to go. Because when you're sitting down, the last thing you want to do is lean over and get it out of your pocket. This is the way to go. Oh, see, let's see, gotta go. Glad I just dropped it for a few. Great. Thanks for stopping in. It would be a lot shorter. Yeah, you're making me want to do a green knife now. Yeah, you should. You should do a green captain underpants. Um cold steel clunks when you close. Okay, so. As you can see, this is getting a nice patina on it already. And I use this a lot. I mean, this that blade is very slicey. It's got a bunch of gunk on it. Yeah. Um, and it's got a uh, little wire stripper tool. And it's got... Essa, essa é aquela faca suíça que falam? Não, é alemão. Alemão? Sim, é, é tipo de elétrica. Hum. So the, 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 the scissors work really well. It's got a really nice spring on it. So this is the electrician's knife. That's This is what makes it the electrician's knife. This tool here. That's your stripper. <laughs> Olha, amor. Olha isso. Nossa. 
So as you can see, there's that's how it connects, and that's how it connects to the to the sheath. So I know I know New Jersey knife guy loves his pokers and he loves his leather sheaths. This is gonna make him. What does he? What does he always say? I'm gonna make you make you wet your panties or something. You guys should check out his channel. It's the best. Oh, this is also part of the Chinatown. Look at that. Two ninety nine. It's not a great price, but that's basically what these mm -hmm. these paracord things are. And this is sort of a pinkish lavender, you know. So I think I might start rocking that. Uh, the other green knife I have is the well, I don't have. Mariana won the the um. Oh wait, no. I oh this is the one she won. Never mind. This is the one that Mariano won, but I bought the green tanto of this. The um blanking on the name of this. You guys remember this the folding blade? It was like 28 bucks. What's the name? What's the name of of the slip joint with that nice half stop. Great blade shape. Um, yeah, I have the green one. And this one she won from, I think, Big Red's giveaway. So, there's that. So, the fracture, that's it. The Savivi fracture. And they're still available. It's definitely a great value. So I think that's it for my green knives and my Chinatown knives. Oh, and then I was going to open the sap, but I don't even know where it is. I don't know if I should go look for it. How long is it? Been? Let's see. How long has it been? How do you check? Does anyone know how long we've been streaming for? It should say on our Oh, it's Ah, 47. <laughs> Nabada! <laughs> so he's teasing me from my, my chubby cheeks. Uh, okay. Oh, wait, no, here's more green knives. What am I thinking? So here are my nice green knives. So this was. So if someone gives you a hard time, you know, St. Patrick's here, you're wearing green? Like, yeah, I'm wearing green. Here's my green knife. So that's the way to work that. So this is the kicker with the recoil lock. Just as a comparison, they made the CJRB um, crag in a, re in, a, in a recoil lock as well. Uh, this one actually works much better because, as you can see, it drops, it falls shut better because of the heavier blade. So the recoil lock actually works much better with this. So I'm going to do a review of these two and show you a comparison of that. I've got my Para 2 and Digi Camo. So that's green, right? Um, oh, Sue, so this is the one that I painted, painted glow in the dark, the, the underside of the scales. I actually painted the outside of them too, just to see what it would do, and see if any of them would stick. I mean, purely experimental, but this is pretty much one of my favorite knives, period. I mean, it's also one of my most inexpensive knives. So, um, I'm going to do a video on this knife and say... It's going to be like real clickbaity, like the only knife you need or something like that. Because if you've got this knife, there's almost nothing you can't do. Now, if there's something that you can't do with this knife, you should already know that. Like, you know, if you do heavy, heavy use, you already know you're going to need something more than just a simple, you know, um, knife like this. Um, but this is the size of the um, Ontario Rat 2, I believe. And I don't know. That looks like a gray. I think it's bone. Does that count as green? Okay. And yeah, that's it for my green knives. Well, not really. There's a whole bunch of unopened knives, but I'm not going to go into it yet. Cool to see your green knives. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, sure. Happy St. Patrick's Day to you. So I think that's it for my green, you know, most of my green knives. Okay. Or the ones that I've opened. Um, and the ones that I could find. I don't remember, so I'm kind of curious what happened when I set it up. Did you actually get a notice that I'd be going live? Because I noticed that you are already in. 
I, I'd like to know how that works. And I don't know how to set it to like, some people say like, oh, live show premiering in 30 minutes. I couldn't figure out the, fun they used to have a way of doing it, but they, they've changed the format. So you can't do it that way anymore. They've limited now all the things you can do. You might have to reach a certain amount of viewership. I don't know. So um, the last thing I could do is go ahead and open that sap, the blackjack, if you guys want to see it. Um, I'll go ahead and do that now. Mas eu não durmo. Aonde você vai? Ah, eu procuro algumas para aberta, mas eu não consigo procurar. <risos> não sei aonde. I just remembered I have more green knives. I have my, my buck doctor's traditional. So here we go. That is beautiful. This is one of my pretty much my favorite traditional knife. It's made by buck and it's the doctor's knife. Oh, it's got a brutal back spring that I just can't deal with being one-handed. And then I have my my one-arm razor, my zombie nick. This is a gift from from uh, D's knives. That you hook onto, you know, your boot, the bottom of your boot or on your pant leg. This is the one-arm razor. This was for vets that were returning home from maybe the Civil War and they had one arm and so this was made as a one-arm deployment i've got this it's like a vintage with a bale it's completely rusted over i mean you basically can't even open it it's just a crappy little thing got it for like a dollar at ross cutlery and uh i guess that's it for my green knives i think that's it for my green knives Got this one here. Yeah, that's a black and white G10. Or no, it might even be a Micarta. Might be my car. This is the hoof, hoof, hoof pick. I don't know if you've ever taken care of horses, but that's critical. I meant to send that to uh, OCD for EDC's wife, Molly, um, for her horse. I still will. I just forgot. It's procrastination like everything else. Anyway, I can't find the, uh, the sap I was supposed to do an unboxing of. I don't know where it went. Where did I put that thing? I left it here. Buried under the kitchen. Yeah, I forgot where I put it. Okay, found it. We'll do a quick unboxing. Uh, I guess we should use the official or one of the official unboxing knives. Considering I actually brought it over. The Frank Frazetta Gordito by Boker button lock. It's on this is on clearance. Uh, I would say it's worth getting. Nice and spicy. Now this is the coin purse. It's a coin purse slash sap. Now Saps are blackjacks or saps are illegal in California, but I'm hoping I can get away with saying, "Officer, it's just a coin purse," you know. So you wear it like that, I guess, through the belt loop. 
So and then when you take it off, if it's filled with coins, right? Whack. So I don't think it's good leather if it's it doesn't even feel like real leather, but I think it's supposed to be. So and it's real leather. Yeah, it's real leather. Just doesn't feel like it's very high quality leather. So I think that's all I had planned in the title, right? Green knives, Chinatown knives, and the set. Ah, boom! All right, let me look for any last minute comments. Let's see. Oh, eggs and ham? Oh, Jason, hey! Is that your smoke detector or mine? Oh, it's mine. There's nothing I can do to get it to stop. I had to disconnect one of them. I had to disconnect. I, one by one, our, our smoke detectors just give that, that beep, you know. Anyone else hear the beep from a smoke detector battery dying? If not, then it's mine. Yeah, eggs and ham, it's, it's mine. Uh, I have all I'm telling you, I have so many um, that just keep doing that. Hey, thanks for joining us, Eggs and Ham and Jason. Let's see who else. I uh, got a notice when you went live, but not before. <laughs> I did get one when you went live, though. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the glow, the yeah. Um, I'm going to do, I'm going to do a separate video on that. So don't worry. I will. I'm going to do, I'm going to do a video on all, on all the glow in the dark knives. And then I'm going to do one on my, on my mod. Cause it's like pretty much the first mod I ever did, um, to, to, to paint them green. And then I guess live, I'll guess I'll go ahead and paint one of them as well. Um, I'll maybe take the Rhea and just paint one of the scales. And then, you know, and then, and then I've got a UV light here. I got a UV flashlight. Uh, where is it? Here. I got, this, I got this UV flashlight. So I'll go ahead and charge it up and I can show you. Actually, it's getting dark now. Maybe I should do that now. So let's see. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Okay. Look at how well that works. The best, the best glow in the dark is the Swiss Army by far. Um, this this works real well, as you can see. Oh yeah. What's anniversary of Jason? Huh? Hey, it's Sadio. Uh, it's your birthday, Jason. I adore. You see that? So, and then let me show you my, where is my, okay, so here's, here's these. So as you can see those, oh, here's this. You can see. And then where is here? It is. There you go, Sue. See? 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 That's just from painting the underside. Well, as you can see, I did paint the upside as well because i didn't think it was going to last but it looks like most of it lasted except for where my fingers rubbed some of it off i i was just experimenting can you see where some of it rubbed off i wanted to see how much it rubbed off it's purely experiment but i was surprised at how much of it actually stayed on top but mostly uh, i did that after the fact i already tested it first with just painting the underside and that's how well it works from just painting the underside of the scales so as you can see I don't know if you can see that on camera. Am I am I on screen? 
say that? So now imagine this painted that way. It's going to work really well. As you can see, this thing's lit up. Like, look at that. Look at how well this lights up. The Swiss Army one is by far the brightest. The Rough Rider stuff is not super bright. And the CRKT is the least. This one is the least bright. As you can see, it doesn't really light up that well. Okay, so I think that's it. That's not. So. And I believe that's it for my glow in the dark. Okay. 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 Você precisa de algumas. Tá bom. É, é acabou. Fala, fala tchau. Não vamos cantar parabéns, não? Ah, parabéns para para Jason. É, você não deu ainda parabéns para ele. Okay, and your smoke is actually, let's see, what does that say? Uh, nine, oh my gosh, who, Jason is nine years or eggs and ham? That's awesome. Yeah, congratulations, eggs and ham. I'm three and a half years, so that's fantastic. Nine years, is that right? Happy St. Patty's Day. Congrats, Jason. I have nine years today, too. Well, okay, so let me go back and see what's going on here. Anniversary today. I thought I was tripping. I was looking up. And you're just clean and sober. So, Jason, I think it's your it's your wedding anniversary or your clean and sober birthday. I don't I'm kind of confused. I think it's your your wedding anniversary. Um, and aniversario in 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 Portuguese is for birthday. That's what they they say anniversary uh, anniversary for birthday. So I think she thought it was somebody's birthday. Well, although it is. It is eggs and ham. So it's my wedding anniversary today, but I am 21 years. Good Lord, Jason, 21 years. Look at that. Friggin' congratulations, man. So that's awesome. I That's great finding out all these things about you guys. That's really cool. So, yeah, I guess I'm the, I'm the youngster amongst you guys. I'm uh, just about at three and a half years. So. You know, it's been a it's been a fantastic three and a half years. I'll tell you that much. I can't believe it. Had I known, <laughs> had I known, I'd have gotten clean earlier. <laughs> Just didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> oh, good lord! I mean, it's not funny, but it's funny. Okay. I'm a bottle of wine. You know, we don't discuss. Ah, disculpa, disculpa, disculpa. Nós falamos sobre. Eles, eles não, eles não bebem também. So just for anyone who missed it, this is my favorite traditional. My bug. Careta. Lembra aí? Lembro, lembro. Um. So I don't know if you guys want to hang out more. I'm gonna. I I finished showing everything I meant to. Uh, so. Um, as you can see how janky the setup is here, I, I really don't I really don't know how I'm going to do this because I actually meant to do it 180 degrees different from how it is now. I was going to put her monitor over here and face it that way. Love doctor's knife. Do you have a doctor's knife, Jason? 
This is my first and only thus far. Um, but I absolutely love it. You know, it's got, see the, the spring on the bottom is flat for crushing pills. This is for, you know, separating pills for scooping up patent medicines from jars and, uh, you know, splitting up lines of Coke. <laughs> <laughs> love the doctor's knife. Hollywood, what meetings do you go to? I feel like I might have seen you before. I couldn't place it until you said eggs and ham. But I'm in Hollywood. You're, didn't you say, wait, where are you, eggs and ham? You're not in Hollywood, are you? I go to the Valley sometimes. I go to greater LA sometimes. I've, I've been around. I went to Florida uh, for the, uh, the World Convention two years ago. And I'm sitting on my phone. I have a Rough Rider Sparkle Doctor's Knife. The, the Sparkle, is that the purple one or is that the purple swirl? But I'm looking to start a collection. I just moved to Nevada, but I was in Los Angeles before. Really? Oh, my gosh. I used to have a big, long braid all the way down to my waist. You would recognize me if you've seen me. Eggs and ham. Where? I wonder. Let's see. I should put... My um, I put my my Instagram on here. It's I think it's called Brain. I think this is it. There. You were in LA then. I used to attend me all over Beverly Hills, WeHo, Hollywood, South Bay. Okay. Well, maybe you know me then. That's a trip. Wait. Let's see. I'd have to go to your. I don't know if you have pictures of you. That's so weird. Such a small world. The meetings I go to, I live right by BHS, which is the Behavioral Health Services on Sunset and La Brea. It's on Sunset and Orange, right across the street from the in and out That's where I go to a lot of meetings. I go to the meetings over there in um, Hollywood, um, Lutheran Church. That's over there on New Hampshire and Hollywood Boulevard, right near Vermont, over there by the Johns Market. Or the um, or that uh, was that that hamburger joint, Tommy's. Yeah, is there a Tommy's right there? And then I've, like on the Olympic, there's a church. There's a church on Wilshire. I mean, there's there's like a thousand meetings in Los Angeles. I think I used to attend meetings over at Beverly Hills, Wee Hill, what's up there? Yeah, so I've been to, there's this really big meeting I went to over there in Beverly Hills at the library. They have that auditorium and they have like, like celebrities speak there. <laughs> like, you can always see celebrities there. I swear the people are like a fashion show. It's pretty cool. So yeah, whoops. Well, we're falling apart here. Oh, it's cool. We're finding out a lot. Uh, let's see. Is anyone still in the chat? Well, let's see. There's six people. Hit thumbs up if you guys haven't hit thumbs up yet. So, let's see, how do I check? Oh, there's zero people on. No, wait, is that six or zero? I can't see shit. Oh, six. Okay. So, yeah, unless anyone has anything still here, yeah. If you guys have anything, if you have any questions or comments or um, – I'm thinking about doing a bro like a, a podcast, like Ask Me Anything. Like any kind of question you have, like why is it like this and why is it like that? You know, I'm uh, I have a bunch of guests lined up that want to do podcasts too. So thinking about doing like a podcast, um, have different guests on, and we'll just talk about everything from you know politics, health, religion, science, all the stuff that you're not supposed to talk about. Um, I want to I want to do that so. Uh, yeah, if you guys have any like big, big picture questions, like what's the meaning of life? And, you know, how do I have intimacy in my life? You know, if you have any big questions, uh, I'd like to, I'd like to go into that. So, I mean, $8 for this, even if it breaks in a month, that's it. I mean, that to me, that's worth it because. That's fidget. You know, that's fidgetability. 
OCD for EDC. What is that? Google Chrome. Okay. Okay, I sure see. I used to always take the treatments. I used to always take the treatment centers and worked out every, every night. Worked it every night too. Oh, okay. I see you have a picture there. You got a big old beard. Yeah, I don't I don't know. So yeah, oh I used to go to WeHo too a lot. Um over there there's, there's that big treatment center there, which they finished by the way. Um uh they um they they broke it down for a while and they built a brand new multi-million dollar building. It's so nice inside. So that's done. I'm not sure if I have you on Instagram. Eggs and ham, 22 on there too. Okay, I'll look you up over there. So I'll send you a message. So if there's not, if there's nothing else, I'll probably shut this down because I think it's. Oh yeah, it's already over an hour. So this was just a last minute idea. I had been meaning to catch up on on these unboxings and just different stuff. You know, I had the Chinatown knives. I got that over whew, like a week, a, a week ago or something. And I don't know if you guys did. I do a video on my masks that I bought downtown as well. My uh... <laughs> wait, did I? Yeah, I think I, I thought I did. This is one of the masks I got. It's like my Hannibal Lecter mask. like that and then I got I got a riding mask as well so you put this it's kind of for the half half helmets you know the brain buckets hold on take my glasses off but I haven't tried it yet I have to go get my helmet but I'm pretty sure this will fit underneath my helmet as well I think it'll work. Well, I've never done this one-handed. Ah, oh, maybe not. Ah, uh, maybe not. Gente, eu vou ouvir, Yep, it kind of works. Yeah, it sort of works. I don't know if you guys can hear me, but talk about talk about tactical. Look at that digi camo. Are you kidding me? But this, I mean, when it gets cold, you know how cold your face gets. This ought to do it. So it's really meant for the half helmets. But look at that. How dumb, how dominatrix is that? Isn't that hilarious? The zipper mouth? That's just too much. <laughs> So I got that. And uh, this, I got all this downtown. Um, I got these gauntlets because I want to put like fixed blades on there. Like, see? See that? I can strap it. Or I could lace it like that. See? I got two of those. And that's it. So that's some of the rock and roll stuff I got downtown.
I almost wrecked my bike riding in Pennsylvania because it was so cold. I couldn't stop. Sure. Oh my God. Um, oh, Hey, stuff we do. How's it going? Um, yeah, man. Well, Pennsylvania, good Lord. It's so cool. Dude. Cause I used to stay, uh, uh, my girlfriend's parents had a farm in upstate New York, which was like right across the border from Pennsylvania. There's a lot of snow and it's cold as shit. So, so Hawaii knife and gear was over on the East coast. That's, it's a big difference in climate. <laughs> so here's a preview of, uh, Upcoming stuff. I don't know if you guys can see. This is my, this is not all, but most of my traditional knife. Actually, this is most of it, but I have a lot more. Um, they're sort of spread around here and there. Because um, I have I have the rest of them in sheaths and my carry mm -hmm. cases and stuff. And yeah, so that's that. I'm gonna put the rest of these away. I think I'm gonna put all the rest of my traditionals away, except for these. Yeah, I can't. I leave these on the wall because the sunlight charges them up, and then afterwards, at nighttime, they glow. It's, uh, glow in the dark stuff takes me back to childhood. I used to love glow in the dark stuff. Oh, born and raised on the East Coast. Okay. My. Mas eu falo em inglês, você não, você não entende mesmo. Ah, sim, mas eu tava rindo, eu tava te zoando quando você botou o capacete. <laughs> <laughs> ok, so, I think we're going to call it quits. It's already an hour and almost 18 minutes. So, if there's nothing else, if you guys don't have any questions or comments or you wanted to see something again. So this was the sap. It's like a ch coin purse. Or it's meant to it's meant to look like a coin. I thought this was the only way I'd ever get away with having a sap. So you fill it with coins, which I'll do. Um, here we go. <clears throat> so. So, well, I'm definitely implicating myself in this video. If I ever go to court, they're going to be like, you knew it was a sap, look. Be like, but officer, it's just a coin purse. See? It's just meant to be a coin purse. It goes on the belt like this. So you put it on your belt like that. Like that. I mean, I, I might actually EDC this. I mean, it's actually pretty useful. So, what is that? Saw that. Great idea. Okay. Yeah. So, there's that. And um, I don't know if you saw the poker collision of double XL. <laughs> this is the most ludicrous knife. And then I have the Cali Legal ones, which are, uh, I think, KnifeWorks exclusive. Anyway, I think I'll call it. Okay, you are telling on yourself right now. I know. Um, yeah.
Very true. Probably shouldn't have said anything. Have a ball. Hola, ciao. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Okay, see you later, guys. Love the XL. It's actually stuff we do. This is the double XL. So there's the, the Kalishnikov XL, and this is a Blade HQ Blade HQ exclusive, the double XL. I mean, it is ludicrous. I mean, it's preposterous. Here it is next to the uh, six-inch tie light. So you can see... This is next to the to the rat one. There's the rat one. You know how big the rat one is. There's the um, the eighty fifteen, which is it's right in front of my face. What do I do with the eighty fifteen? There it is. There it is in front of the 8015. You can see it dwarfs the 8015. So it's much bigger than the XL. This is the double XL. It looks awesome. It is later, brother. Have a good night. Bye, Mariana. Jason Fale, bye. Bye. Okay, guys. See ya. I I take um, this is a pretty lucky one. <laughs>